what we have coming up in the workshop will be absolute torture. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to continue doing the uh, the torture chamber set from Mantic Mantic Games um, Terrain Crate. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our wood. Now with the wood last time, if you guys remember, we did we used the new um, right there Thrandia Brown. And then we washed everything down with our handy dandy Agrax Earth Shade, as we do. And next, we're going to give it a bit of a dry brush with Steel Legion Drab. That'll help start pulling out um, all the grains in the wood. Ooh, nothing more than like opening up a brand new paint. And of course, we'll be using my small dry brush and it's a well used well loved brush and if you don't know how to dry brush I know I've probably dry brushed other things but if you don't know how to dry brush basically what you do is you put a little bit of paint on your on your brush then you almost take it all off almost you work it into the bristles and then, just very lightly, you're going to hit whatever it is that you're painting and the new color will just hit the raised areas. Kind of like that. And the more you go over it, it's a heavier dry brush, so it'll allow you to get more of that color on there. As you can see, it's starting to bring up all the nice detail of the wood. Now we are doing the inside because the inside is important. We are going to have a dude, you know, skeleton, as it were, or you know, a mostly rotted fella inside, and we want his home to be nice and you know happy and homey. for a dead guy. You know what we're doing? We're just gonna keep on keeping on. Same color, same technique. And we're gonna go over all, pretty much all of our pieces. Now, I mean, if you want to, you can agonize over every last board and every last knot. This is getting your, this is trying to get your train done nice and fast, but still looks good so you can get it onto your table to play. And look at that. There. Nicely done. Coffee. 
Let me put that aside. Because the coffin is pretty much that that's it for the coffin. Boom. But we are going to continue. with the other pieces. Now this one here, of course, we're going to have a little bit of metal on it. But we're going to get we're going to get the metal parts afterwards. Right now we're just worrying about the wood and whatever we paint if we don't like it or if we get paint somewhere where, we, where it's not supposed to be that's okay because we can go back and paint over top that's the great thing about this hobby it's relatively forgiving make a mistake and you ah oh, man didn't want that color there. That's okay. As long as you can go back and touch up. Make it all nice and neat. And as you gain more control over your, you know, as you practice and you gain more control over your brushes, you'll be doing the, oh man, a whole, a heck of a lot less. Once you can even hold the brush out a little bit farther on the handle, a little bit looser. There we are. So I can flick over the details. There we are. Put that one aside. We're going to work on that one again later. We're going to do other things to it. Now we're going to take the big one. We're going to take the rack. The rack is going to be a lot of work. I mean, not only do we have wood to work with and worry about, we also have rope and we have the shackles and we have you know, all kinds of things. We have metal. We're going to get to the metal stuff a little bit later. The great thing about these is they can be used for any number of games. They don't have to be, you know, you want, you may, maybe you're, you know, in your sci-fi adventures or something like that. You come across, you know, a backward, a backwater planet that does things just a little macabre. You know, who knows? It doesn't matter. It looked good. We're going to be fast. And we're going to like it. And 
you can hear the sounds of me click clacking all over the place trying to get trying to get the color on the highlights of the wood. Put that aside. The last little thing that we're gonna do is an instrument table. This one we're going to be a little bit more careful with. And the reason why we're going to be a little bit more careful with it is because it's there is another color that's going to go over top to help it, you know, to give it a leather-like color. There we are. All right. So now we have more or less dry brushed all of our wood. Now we're going to do our leather. And our leather, of course, had the same two base colors. It had the, the Throndia brown and the Agrax Earthshade. But doesn't quite have the same highlight color. The, the new highlight color we're going to use is Gorthor Brown. This one we're going to do just a little bit different. There we go. Instead of dry brushing, we're actually going to paint on the highlights. And we're going to start with the rack. No, it's not the rack, it's the operation table as it were. So we put a little bit of Gorthor on the palette. And then we kind of follow along where they where I've already highlighted. We can decide if we want to work it in a little bit. These are the darkest parts. So you know, they look similar, but there is a bit of a difference. And now we're gonna do that satchel.
We're going to work on that tool belt, or that not the belt, but this tool pouch. Which is a fantastic little piece of detail. I, I'm actually quite, quite enjoying it. You know. Nice old leather pouch carrying the tools of the trade. Nice oiled brown leather. It's been used. On many. Many people. Things, people, persons. Well, I don't know. Whatever you want to. However you want to put it. I mean, if you want to go one higher, you can go one higher. We can find a find a nice brown to do a to do a bit of a highlight. Let's see what we got. It's one of my favorites. And this is just for the leathers. The uh, <laughs> riggedy parts of my. I don't want to get them all mucked up, so I'm going to pull them up a little bit. Actually, you could almost use a yellow. To do the high warm parts. We're just given. Just a little bit. Not too, too much. An extra look of wear. Yeah, kind of like how that's turning out. We're going to go back to the belt right here. And what we're going to do is right on the tippy tops. Gonna give that 
not the extra wear. There. there we go. Now, of course, we have some rope to deal with. I don't really know what we're going to do with the rope. I'm going to leave that for now. But we are. We are going to go we're going to do a dark, kind of a dark metal. It's called Iron Warriors. And I think that'll look real good. What we're going to do is we are just going to wipe down, well, I guess paint down. You know, the chains and chains and the shackles and you know all that fun stuff that you find in a torture chamber. And see how it's coming along. Here we are. Look at that. Torture Chamber Deluxe. You got some information that you need to get from somebody? Shackle them up, put them on the table, and start pulling out internal body parts. Oh, don't worry about the, uh, don't worry about the anesthetic. They don't need anesthetic. They're fine. Now we're going to go from that table to the rack, because the rack's got a little bit. You know, it's got shackle-like things on it. We're going to use the same color on the wheels, too. Now 
because why not? Clack goes the rack, stretching people out, making it thin. But I mean, you know, it's one way to try and get information or whatever it is that they're trying to do. These people, it is, after all, a torture room. Okay. I kind of think those are metal too. So let's make them metal. Make that metal. I'm just kind of deciding along the way what would look cool as metal and what would not. That's also another way to paint your paint your minis. Uh, we haven't really discussed it, I don't think, but there's what they call the rule of cool. What looks cool? What you know? What looks good to you? And don't worry too much about what other people think or say. These are your minis. And I've always said, you know, paint them how you feel. Paint them what makes you happy. And to be honest, I'm kind of having a little bit of fun in painting a torture chamber. Honestly, honestly, something I never thought I'd really thought I'd see myself doing. But here I am, painting a torture chamber. To me, that's actually kind of freaking awesome. It wasn't something I would, well, I'd pick it up on my own. You never know. So what I'm just doing now is I'm just going through the rack here and I'm trying to pick out all the uh, little metal bits, which there are a lot of. We have brackets. All kinds of things. So you just do your best. You miss some, you miss some. Gives you a little touch up project to do later, right? If you're, if you're ever looking for something to do. Always touch up your miniatures. 
especially if it's a tabletop game, they might, you know, they might get a little rubbed, a little raw. But so we are out of time for today. When we come back, though, I will have all of the metal done. Uh, and then we will move on and we will keep going. We have more to paint in our torture chamber of... Yeah, you fill in the rest. Now, if you want, you can just have the torture chamber of death. Bruh. But I think you guys can come up with something far, far more uh, interesting, you know, than I can. But in the meantime, please paint safe, and we'll see you in the workshop.